Hello class, my name is Anthony Vu, and today for my demo project, I'll be demonstrating the index of refraction by placing a coin underneath a glass cup and watching it disappear the moment the water is poured into the cup. As you can see, when pouring water into the cup, the coin disappears, but when you look from above, the coin is still clearly right there. You might be asking what's going on, what's the reasoning behind the coin's, the coin's disappearance? The reason is the index of refraction. A material's index of refraction is a measurement of how fast light moves through it. Light only moves at speed of light through a vacuum. Anywhere else, it is effectively slowed down. For example, when light is moving from one level of refraction to another, it bends. The relatively large difference in the index of refraction of water and air is 1.33 versus 1. This is why your fingers will look distorted or broken off from the hand when, put, when it is placed in water. A glass cup that a coin is under has an index of refraction of 1.49 that is much closer to water than it is to air. So when the penny is at the bottom of the glass, there is one sharp turn that the light from the coin has to make from the cup to the air. The water to glass transition is comparatively mild with little bending. The coin is distorted but is still visible. In order to explain the disappearing coin phenomena, I drew up this diagram in order to explain the index of refraction a little clearer. As you can see in this diagram, when looking at the coin directly without any interference such as water, the index of refraction would stay constant at n equals 1. When water is added, you're moving from two different frames or two different substances through air and through water, which changes at n equals 1 to n equals 1.33. So as you're looking through the glass, the vision your vision would bend the moment your eye or your vision hits the water. In order to see the coin, you would have to move up higher and look at a greater angle in order to see the coin, as shown. In order to kind of uh, experiment a little bit, I use Snell's Law to be able to see um, the critical angles at which you're able to uh, see the coin. I kind of did an experiment where I put a protractor right next to my eye to find the angle at which uh, I can, or the first angle that I can see the coin at, which is 113 degrees. I plugged it all into Snell's Law, which uh, is N1 over N2 equals sine um, beta 2 over sine beta 1. I plugged in all of the values and I isolated beta 2 which equals sine inverse sine of n1 over n2 sine 1 beta.